Well, hello everyone, Lock Garden and Bread Lady here coming to you guys with a quick video. And in this video here, I just wanted to talk about the difference between molting and plucking and possibly over preening. Don't know. Um, but let's jump right into it. Very good. Give me a kiss. Thank you. Alright, so in this video here, well, I, first off, I want to thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If this is not your first time, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you do decide to stay by hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell. I'm sorry, y'all. My third flu nighttime is starting to click kick in, but I'm going to try to squeeze one more video out. So I... I, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to squeeze this video out, but my third flu is starting to kick in. I can feel it. But, okay. So, oh, Jesus. So, I have a bag of feathers here. And I just want to talk about molting versus plucking because this bag of feathers here for Casper, this is feathers. He's molting now. And I don't know if you can really see all these feathers. But he has, and there's one of Danny feathers, Danny's feathers in there. He's molting as well, but his feathers are really small. But Danny, and Casper has lost a lot of feathers over the last two weeks or so. And first, I'm gonna talk about molting. Um, so parrots typically parrots in captivity they typically molt twice a year, and it's usually in the winter. I'm sorry, usually in the spring, and it's usually in the fall. And so my parents, they actually, for some reason, both of them, they molt in the winter and they molt in the summer. So, um, and they molt at exactly the same time. And so, um, how you, and how you can tell they're molting is they will start to look raggedy. Let's see if Danny, up, 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 up. Let's see if we can get a good look at Danny. So if you can tell, Danny looks a little, he looks a little raggedy. He doesn't look as you know sharp as he usually looks and then you also have these little pin feathers I don't know if you can see them have these little pin feathers that are coming out they're white and they're right there on his face can you see those little pin feathers there are you eating my camera <laughs> So you have these little pin feathers there. So that's how you can tell when they're molting. So what molting is, is when they start using their, they start losing their old plumage or their old feathers. And to make, and it makes room for their new feathers to grow in their, in their new um, flight feathers. And one of the best, one of the neatest, the, the greatest things about molting is molting is symmetrical. It's symmetrical. Is if they lose this one feather, if they drop one feather on the right, on the left side, they would drop that same feather on the right side. And the reason that that is, is that's so they won't be off balance when they fly. But yeah, they look a little, they look a little ragged. Now I'm looking up under here as well. Yeah, he has a lot of new feathers coming in. He has a lot of little pin feathers. But I hope my camera is picking up. Stop trying to eat my camera. His little pin feathers and those those little white little feathers there, the white little pins right there around his face. Those are his new feathers coming in. So that's how you can tell that they're molting. Typically, when they're plucking, the difference between molting and plucking is plucking is going to be feathers that they have actually pulled or ripped out. And what I do is when I see, because I get nervous sometimes when I see an overabundance of feathers. I start to look at the feathers and make sure that they don't have any blood on that's how you can tell if it's a feather that has been plucked out it will usually have blood on it or it will have blood on the parrot so that's one thing that I look at as well to make sure that they're not plucking and the same thing with Danny's feathers I look at Danny's feathers as well to make sure that that feather does not have any blood on it and not only do I look for blood I look to see if it's actually a feather that has fallen out and you can tell because it have that little hole there at the tip of the feather I look to see if it's a feather that has actually fallen out naturally or if it's a feather that has been chewed or ripped out and you can really tell the difference and so those are the ways that you can kind of tell if it is a plucking issue or a molting issue because the first time um, Casper molted he lost so many feathers I'm like oh my god he's plucking but he was actually molting 
Um, and some reasons that parrots may pluck is, I know people are like, why would they do, why would they pluck out their own feathers? It's been compared to a person that cuts themselves. When they pluck their feathers, there is endorphins that is released in their brain. And with the endorphins that are released in their brain, you know endorphins are the feel-good drugs. I don't know if you remember on, um, what was the name of that movie? I love it. Um, Legally Blonde, when, um, she was like, exercising is release endorphins. Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. Anyway, um, so, yeah, you know, endorphins are the feel-good, you know, chemicals in your brain. And when they pluck their feathers, just like when someone cuts themselves, it releases those endorphins in their brain. And also, the what can lead to, and I wrote some things down, what can lead to um, plucking is just straight boredom lack of stimulus that's why that's where the toys you see all these toys in there in there what are you trying to do you see all these toys in their in their cages that's where the toys come in at that's where that's why Casper gets a fresh box daily to rip apart that's where human interaction comes in um that's why you just don't leave them in their cage and that goes into the next one lack of attention neglect hormone imbalance nutritional deficiency emotional issues like separation anxiety um what you can do what i do sometimes like when i used to work away from home i used to turn on my laptop and i would put on you know um YouTube, um, a YouTube video, and it would just play over and over again. I had a mimic me where it would record my voice saying certain words, and it would just play over and over again. I think it played for like four hours a day. Um, and you can also, I will also turn on music. I still do that now if I know I'm going to be gone away from the house for a long period of time. And sometimes when I sleep in the daytime, well, I do sleep in the daytime all the time, but. I turn on music for them, bring my laptop now here, turn on music for them, and just let music just go ahead and play for them. And that way, they will have some kind of stimulus, they will have some kind of noise, and it won't be so much separation anxiety. And um, it also could be a medical, fungal, or a mold um, type issue. And um, with molting, molting, like I said, it looks raggedy, and you have those little pin feathers. And But with um, plucking, is you have actually mincing patches of skin. Um, you have like actually like a you will have a bare chest or a big patch of skin where a big patch where there are feathers missing. So if you have a big big patch over here, but you don't have a big patch over here, you have a big patch on the chest, then you know that's how you have a plugging part problem, and it's not a molting problem. So the molting is naturally um, shedding old tattered feathers. It's symmetrical. Um, and captive parrots, they do have longer molts for some reason than parrots in the wild. And it can happen at irregular times as well because of, you know, it's sunlight issues. <coughs> and with pin feathers, I did want to talk about pin feathers. Um, Danny is not going to be still and let me do his pin feathers. As you can see, he just does not, he's not comfortable with me doing his pin feathers. And plus, you can't see it on camera. You gonna let me pop a couple of them? Can I pop a couple of your pen feathers? You gonna let me do it on camera? Hmm? You let me pop a couple. Oh, that feels good. I hit the spot. He has his eyes closed. Can you see it? Ooh, that feels so good to my baby. That feels so good to my baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He likes that. The feathers a lot better. You gonna let me put you back in the cage? Hmm? Go up, up. Up, up. Very good. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Thank you. So shortly after that feather falls out, a new feather will form and it will be like a white uh, and it's going to be up here somewhere. And um, sometimes the ones around their head, they will need help. Um, even here, let's see, around, you're just not going to do right, are you? Casper has a lot of new feathers, a lot of pin feathers around the side of his face and I have to just rub the tip and try to help him out with popping those new feathers which is what I'm doing now, just kind of rubbing them for him and popping that little um, little cast off of it to open those feathers up. Um, and like I said, they, as you can see, he's doing the same thing Casper was, um, Danny was doing. They both love it. And um, so now I'm going to talk about preening. 
Preening is um, just them maintaining their feathers. When they're preening, just make sure they're not yanking or snatching their feathers out. That is a sign of that they could be, they could have a plucking problem or it could develop into a plucking problem. And so what preening is, is they do have... Um, um, a preening gland that secretes all and what that um all does that does actually um help them you know how when you see birds in the rain or something like that how the water just bees off their back or even when I'm giving him a bath I have to really like give him a bath for a long time a shower for a long time before he gets saturated with water because the water just kind of beads off of him um, and that's because of those gland those preening glands that he has that put that all on his feathers and so it, when it comes to over preening it becomes an unhealthy obsession with their own feathers and so if you see that they have a seem like they have an unhealthy un obsession with their feathers just take them to the vet make sure everything is okay and especially if you see any kind of um plucking issues or any kind of bald spots on them that's you know seems like they've been plucking or ripping their feathers out anything besides molting just take them to the vet to get everything checked out and start you know trying to engage them more and um but that's pretty much it this third flu is almost i mean it's there i'm about to pass out so i'm about to put them away and i'm about to go to sleep because i'm supposed to be off today but of course i'm working um an extra shift today so i just need to get me some sleep and i have a little um you know a little sniffles so trying to get rid of that but thank you so much guys for watching and as usual toodaloo bye bye